everybody. It's been a while since I've been with Tom Moore, and uh, he's got some exciting news. And because I'm up to pushing 88,000 now subscribers, he would like to introduce himself to the new subscribers. Sure. Go ahead, Tom. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we haven't spoken since May, so there's been a lot of new uh, people that you've added to your uh, to your followers. So um, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm the author of six books and now seven books, which I'll get into in just a second. Um, you can find them at my website, www.thegentlewaybook.com. I publish a weekly free newsletter. I'm now up to about 900 of those. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so um, we're getting on up there. But it's my gift to the world. I, I, don't, uh, I don't charge for these. So you can even sign up for uh, uh, to receive the, these free news, weekly newsletters, which are typically 10 to 13 pages in length uh, every single uh, week. And uh, there's a sign-up box on the opening page of the website at www.thegentlewaybook.com. So um, I'm I'm the author of the Gentle Way series, which that, that's the first book, and um, <clears throat> I was voted best self self help author for three years in a row by the readers of a health magazine. And um, uh, so I, I've also have other books. Uh, this one's been pretty popular, uh, Atlantis and Lemuria, where I give very detailed uh, uh, information about the, uh, the rise of the humans on Earth. And um, then my latest book, uh, just on this past Thursday, we had a Zoom meeting between my literary agent and uh, and the publisher of, of Flint Hills Publishing, and they're going to publish my book, and he'll, they say it, it will come out somewhere around the middle of 2025. And th at this point, they are also going to be uh, they're planning to go to uh, the Frankfurt Book Fair. So anyone internationally, if you're in Australia, uh, as an example, or uh, or New Zealand, or uh, any any English speaking country, it's going to be coming out there, and then they will be obviously selling foreign rights to hopefully Germany and France and and other uh, countries. So. That's that's coming out up in mid twenty five and and then later. Um, <laughs> let's see where are we? And you just so, got the approval. And your theme, and I've talked about this on my show, and we use it during our prayer session, is most benevolent outcome. Sure. And in other words, you can say, I request a most benevolent outcome for that blank blank blank. Thank you. And you say that out loud <clears throat> and it works. This absolutely works perfectly. And I, when I started experimenting with it, I didn't understand how it worked. All I knew is that this is fantastic and it works. I remember first time I used it, I, uh, I was heading towards a mall in, in Marin and it was always busy. It was always packed. But I really wanted a coffee. And so I said, most benevolent outcome for a parking space. And I swear to God, I pull up and someone's backing out right in front. <laughs> I said, I'll be doggone. Doggone. So um, another update that I'll mention uh, before we get into lots of other stuff is that on, if, if you haven't heard about this already, on November the 13th, there's going to be a congressional subcommittee hearing on UFOs and UAPs, and it's going to be one of the biggest 
things to take uh, take the part or uh, happen in 20, uh, 2024 for sure and, and spreading on to 2025, uh, there's going to be lots and lots of information coming out from whistleblowers. So if you have a chance. So, um, but is this, you know, they've had a lot of meetings. Pardon? Why is this one such a big one? Well, it's because last year when they had their congressional subcommittee hearing, they were going to have 10 whistleblowers. And, but when they wound up, they only had three because all the other seven were pressured into not appearing. This time, they're not going to tell anybody who they're going to have. And so that way, they think they're going to be able to have many more whistleblowers. And as uh, now, Nancy Mace, con Congressional Representative Nancy Mace, is going to be the chairman of this one. And she <laughs> she's she's kind of a funny lady from what I could tell. She says, I am going to have some people that that have seen some shit. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's what she's saying. So I was just telling everybody about a show I watched. I can't remember which show it was, but it was in Russia. And a man had a piece of glass. Not a mirror, a piece of clear, clear glass. It was actually a broken piece of glass. And he's showing like their tenements. You know, they have those tall buildings where mm -hmm. people live. <clears throat> he's showing above it and you don't see anything. When he took the piece of glass up, you see a UFO sitting right there. You know, yeah. just, and then he takes it away. It goes away. I mean, it was amazing. And I'd love to see that. If you, if you have a link, I'll send find it. it. But the, I haven't the, seen the, that yet. So it could have been CJ, but I'm not quite sure. But I, I'll tell you, it was fascinating. But um, the ETs that I speak with tell me that they're always here, and a lot of times they are invisible. Oh, you sure. Can't see them. Yeah. You they, can have yeah. motherships <laughs> over every, all of a sudden you notice you can't see the stars, but they're there. Yeah. My, uh, uh, another update, <clears throat> my family and I have been told that we're supposed to do a series of documentaries on board uh, my, uh, oh gosh, I haven't pulled that book up. Um, this is my first contact book from 2013, and there's been a lot of changes since then, but basically, um, uh, uh, just towards the end, when I was about to close off that book, I was told my family and I are going to do like a four camera shoot on board and tour. That's my that's my uh, ET buddies that I communicate with every week and uh, telepathically. And uh, uh, we're going to shoot for 14 days and it's going to wind up with either one or two, um, two hour or so um theatrical documentaries, and a 100-episode series. And their mothership, the Syrian mothership, is hovering 50 miles above us, but they're, they have cloaked themselves in a slightly different frequency so they don't scare us out of our wits. And uh, there are also t about 24 other motherships all, uh, all over the world, and they're all taking all these millions of readings each day as part of Creators, the Earth Experiment, as it's called. So a lot to go through there, but we, uh, and we can talk about that later if you want. Also, um, uh, uh, I will also mention that I've been working for several months, months on a congressional bill proposal called Guns for Groceries. <clears throat> I, I have a, um, I, I have a petition that you can find on AVAS. Easiest just to go to one of my newsletters where I list it every every time and sign the petition. But I've I to bring everyone up to date. I've had three uh, Zoom calls with with congressional offices. Uh, the latest one was with uh, uh, Congressman Mike Thompson of California. 
his office. He is chairman of the Gun Violence Protection Task Force, long, long name, and had a pretty good meeting. It's just that all of these people, men and women, are all running for office. So they don't want to do anything until after the elections. So I've just kind of went quiet and not tried to force it uh, uh, to have more uh, of these Zoom meetings until after the elections. But I, I was having pretty good, um, uh, you know, pretty good talks with these people. I've only had one turn down uh, from a uh, uh, congressional representative in Texas. And uh, so far, everyone's been open. We'll see. So yeah. that's that brings everybody fairly up to date, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you're most famous for the most benevolent outcome. And then you also take care, uh, you have a book about pets, too. On what? Your book about pets. Oh, pets, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for mentioning it. The Gym Away with Pets. I think those are so cute animals they chose for the cover. Yeah. Um, and I get into discussions um, with even what we call group souls, but these are the souls of the all the animals on Earth. So as an example, there's one soul that ensouls every single dog on the face of the Earth. And there's one soul that ensouls every single domesticated and feral cat on earth and i said for cats so i said well what about the other felines oh there's other souls for those we like to split up the work so every single soul or every single being in the universe is in souls and that's very important to understand that creator loves variety but and create but creator make sure that every that every single uh being on earth and all throughout the universe is ensouled. That's great. How's the weather? How's the weather where you're at right now? Is it hot? Uh, starting to warm up. We're, uh, we we have a nice cool uh, period, and um, uh, suddenly now it's uh, it's getting warmer. Will be about eighty nine or ninety on Wednesday, but uh, then it'll cool back down again. So um, it, it was uh, sixty two this morning. So it's been as low as forty six or so. So I uh, when I did my twenty twenty four. Hopefully, you can't hear the dog barking. Just one of my bit, dogs wants the end. <laughs> just, a wee, just a wee bit. Well, I had did my twenty twenty four predictions. All I could see was water. Mm. And that's exactly what's happening there. And you, the UK right now, Scotland and Ireland are inundated. New Mexico is inundated with floods. Uh, Florida, as you know, more floods. I didn't feel another hurricane or a substantial hurricane hit in Florida again mm. at this time. But all I could see was bad weather. And that's exactly what we've been going through. Did your guides tell you about the crack? I saw a big shift in the ocean with the uh, the land underneath the ocean. Earthquake. Yeah, but it feels like it's out in the ocean. Yeah. I haven't uh, checked on that. Um, okay. Of course, you and I both, way back in January, were, uh, and I'll, I'll update this and we'll try and skip past it as soon as possible. Both of you and I uh, had received that uh, Mr. Trump was going to have a health problem in uh, uh, this year. And uh, uh, it it seemed to be heart related. And I, I had said, well, you know, I even got the possibility that it, it could be uh, uh, congressional con, con, huh. heart. I'm forgetting the word. Sorry. Uh, Stroke or heart or uh, or heart. Uh, yeah, just a heart problem. So, um, and, and so now we're, you know, we keep hearing about uh, about exhaustion and everything. And I, I asked about this. I said, well, you know, it's almost November. It looks like 
uh, that's that's not going to happen what you told me and they said uh, they, they said uh, tom just wait so okay. Said, okay well i'm sure when he loses he'll flip out yeah did what you see you? did that door behind you just open and close did you see that no <laughs> How can a dog open a door and close the door? And there was nobody I, behind the door. I, I think probably I, I just forgot to turn on the light this morning. Let, let me let the dogs in. And okay, let me put you on pause. <laughs> Some things you forget turning on the light. Some things you forget and turning on the light was one of them. Okay. <laughs> so, so how's your health been? I finally got COVID, by the way. Yes, I heard. Gosh, that's that's a rough one. I, I assume you picked it up on your trip to Chicago. Yeah, probably on the flight. But five days, I, they put me on Paxlovid. Uh, it leaves a terrible taste in your mouth. But my nephew also got it. And he's in his late 30s. He didn't take Paxlovid. But we were sick the same amount of time and got better the same but I was very lucky, you know, I just had a, a, a update on my injection and it was like a bad cold. It's, mm. I didn't have issues with vomiting or anything like that. But Good. It's just like having a bad cold and you want to sleep. That interesting thing is I didn't lose my taste or nothing, but I could for weeks after just lay down and sleep most of the day. And, and did... Uh... That's fantastic. Did, uh, before I forget, did you have any electrical problems? None. Yesterday? None. Yeah. Fantastic. What What does that mean? Electrical problems? You well, mean... where they shut off the power? Oh my God! They They made a big deal out of it. They shut off poor Napa early in the morning. They were pissed. I'll tell you. I have a wind thing that tells me what the wind. The highest it ever got the first day was 12 miles an hour. Most of the time, it's two, three. And the second day, it was still, absolutely still. <laughs> but in the in Mount Tamapias, up in the hills, Mount Shasta, it was 64 mile an hour gusts. But it wasn't here because I lived, I moved here, just bought this house when we had the Armageddon. And it, I remember those 70 mile an hour gusts. It was in big, huge pieces of, uh, of uh, what do you call it when it's burning? Big pieces of, of um, what do you call it? Embers, not? Embers. Okay. But big fat ones. And my ex-husband was here at the time. He didn't leave. Me and the kids packed everything up and we left. And he put sprinklers up on the roof. Just kept the sprinklers going. And I read on the news about another fire that happened somewhere. It was a pretty bad fire, and this whole neighborhood got burnt up. And the guy had put sprinklers on the roof before he left. His house was the only one that didn't burn down. Wow. So. There you go. There you go. Oh. Um, would you like to talk about overlapping lives? Yes, yes, please. I love that. Okay. Um, now this was something um, I had been I hadn't been told. Now keep in mind, everybody. I, I need to explain. Um, I know Alex Ferrari on his next Soul Level uh, program. I happened to see where he listed four different types of of channeling or whatever. He listed uh, you know deep channeling where someone just goes into a deep trance and and another entity comes out and talks. And then there's conscious channeling where, where the person stays awake but also knows what, what that entity is saying. And then there's <clears throat> telepathy. And I think um, I think you're you're more on the telepathy end from the standpoint of of getting answers consciously. And what I do is sort of like a combination of conscious channeling and um, uh, and telepathy in that, <clears throat> excuse me, got dry, 
it is so dry here in Texas. Is it really? But um, so uh, it's it's a combination, and and I'll put myself into a light alternate uh, state. It's not a deep state, you know, like the people that do that do the unconscious channeling, but it, just enough where I can ask to speak to Gaia or Theo, my guardian angel, <clears throat> or dog soul, or, or cat soul, or uh, a, a creator. I've, I've done a number of, of uh, conversations with creator. Creator says that in the future, every single human being on earth will, uh, will communicate with creator during their meditations. We're just not there yet. <clears throat> and anybody can do what I do because there is the pineal gland in the back of your head that acts as an antenna for every single type of telepathic thought, feeling, you name it, okay? So anyone can do what I do, um, and I'm part of my soul contract is to encourage people to learn to meditate so you can ask your own questions and and some of those questions can be about overlapping lives. So, <clears throat> um, the uh, I was told that because the 20th century, you know, we hit the 7 billion person mark, that all hands were on deck. Well, now I didn't understand what that exactly meant. <clears throat> I think I do more now. Basically... Um, not only is it every soul having a life during the 20th century, we're having, we've been having multiple lives in the 20th and even going into the 21st century, but we have reached the maximum number of people on earth and slowly but surely the population of the world is going to shrink slowly but surely, but if you'd like to uh, know more about, about these overlapping lives, of course, you can learn about them during, during meditation. Now, let me, I, I, I'll give some for instances, if you'd like, of some of the ones I found. I found all the ones in the 20th century with the exception of one. I still have one to go. Okay. So in overlapping lives, I know I've had, uh, one life as a young German soldier who was killed in the trenches early in the war in World War I. Then in, uh, for the Second World War, I was a nine-year-old Jewish girl, and I and my parents were killed by a German kill squad, probably in farm country in Russia, but I'm not sure. Okay, so that's another life. Then uh, I know... I in a future life I'm going to be Sarah Northrup, who was uh, L. Ron Hubbard's second wife, and helped him write the um, uh, the science uh, what science Scientology Scientology book. Thank you. And um, but because it's a future life, it's we're going to write a more gentle version of that because all of your lives. Uh, uh, all your lives uh, influence all your other lives all at the same time. Okay, so so Sarah Northrup is one life, and and in fact, uh, a good friend of mine in this life, um, in the in the next life together, um, I'm going to be his mother, and we're in a loving relationship, and the one after that. It's when he's going to be L. Ron Hubbard, and I'll be Sarah Northrup. Then I'm also in a future life going to be Queen Menon, who's the queen to Haile Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia. And again, these are all uh, lives where I, I've all met all the people that are going to be these uh, rulers. Everybody wants me to be their advisor, and that's a long story we probably don't have time to get into today. And uh, let's see. Oh, oh, 
uh, in about 44 or 45 lives. I'm going to be a, a young lady that's currently working in the Pentagon. And when there's a female president elected in 2032 or three, somewhere there, I, I'm going to be one of her advisors. And then, um, then I've got another life that I just found out about. And uh, as I say, I have one more life to go. But this one is... Um, uh, <laughs> let's see how to explain it. Um, I was born in the UK in the late 20, uh, 2010s and worked in World War II in the war rooms of Churchill and in the military. And I was sort of a psychic. I was able to tell them the size of the German units, where they were going. So that's a, that's a life that I'm exploring right now. And right. Um, uh, after the war, I settled in a, a quite English village with uh, a officer that I married. And, um, and, and we had a quiet life. And I died from lung cancer because everybody smoked back then. Oh, yeah. Back that time, so that's the latest life I've, I've been able to uncover. Well, this is good to know for people who are interested in past lives. Yeah, it's it's something you, you know. Well, why should why do I you know need to uh, uh, you know need to go in a trance or something? Well, you can ask all these questions. Go to my website uh, and and click on uh, uh, click on articles and news. I've got all 900 newsletters all archived there, and you can go through any of them, start at the newest ones and work backwards and see all the questions that people all over the world send to me to ask in these meditative sessions. I'm told I'm the only person in in the world that opens opens it up for people from anywhere to send me a question, but you can ask your own questions. Right, right. Um, Dolores Cannon was not she put other people under and it was very interesting like the Notre Dame and all that very interesting what she did hmm. but I don't know if I'm interested in knowing future lives at all Oh, or past lives don't forget past life I could but they try to put me under several times and they can't yeah I just, something that, I just something want, that you do yourself. Yeah. You know? I, I do recommend for people that want to try that, um, they can go to Amazon.com and and do a search for Dick D I C K Sutphen S U T P H E N and buy his his um, spirit guides audio. They used to have a CD of it. I don't know if I have. I don't see one laying around here. Uh, they used to have a CD, but it's only audio now. Um, Hay House, I, I think, should have kept it both CD and audio, but that's Hay House. Hey, and he, put, he helps you calm down and go go into yeah, a state. He, he takes you down safely, you know, surrounds you with a bubble of white light and all that stuff. And then he's quiet for five or ten minutes. While you ask your own questions, then he brings you back up. You know, real simple, great for beginners. I used it at one point right after I discovered that I could could uh, do this back in 2005 <laughs> by chance that uh, I started communicating. Yeah, that's wonderful. But listen, I'm dying to ask you about your input with Jesus. That's something new. Yeah, it is. Uh, that and, and even Creator. Uh, both, uh, you know, both I've been been communicating with. I sort of held off from them. I mean, I was getting lots of my questions answered from Gaia, you know, to the point where, where it's resulted in a whole book full of questions for Gaia. 
that I I hope everyone will will uh, uh, check out when it comes out in in the middle of uh, the year. And uh, uh, but uh, uh, I've asked I started asking a few questions for Gaia. I mean, pardon me for Jesus and have learned some some interesting things. Uh, I, I'm trying. I've been trying because way back in the past, I asked lots of questions of uh, Gaia ask, asking about Jesus. And every time I would print something about that, I, I'd have several people that would <laughs> that would cancel off the the newsletter because it was not what they had been taught in, uh, by their religious institutions. So, you know, we can kind of go a little bit as an example. Um, oh, well, right here he says that, uh, or the soul says, uh, that that the New Testament in the Bible is accurate. Only 25% of the New Testament in the Bible is accurate. The Old Testament even less so. That might yeah. piss some people off. Yeah. And that's that's because things started really changing 300 years after he lived um, at the Council of Nicaea, uh, and that was 325 to 327 A.D., where they had 300 priests, bishops, uh, cardinals, whatever, of uh, both the Catholic Church and the Greek Orthodox Church uh, were summoned by Constant, uh, Constantine to Nicaea, and he told them, okay, decide what your beliefs are. And so they argued and and argued and and if they didn't like something in a chapter, they would cut it out. Or if they didn't like a whole book, it went in the, the trash bin, except that supposedly the Vatican has kept copies of all these books throughout the the ages. And um uh so you know there's just as Jesus says in that where I received that, they wanted to establish a patriarchy. And yes, so they removed the fact that he was a married rabbi with four kids. Yes. He had four kids, uh, one of them a girl. He was married to Mary Magdalene. He was known as a rabbi. Rabbis married at that at that time period. So but they they didn't want to mention that. They wanted him to be solely you know, they're, you know, and, and beat out all the other uh, ones that they were, that people were claiming were better than, than Jesus or whatever. So. Right. Right. And that uh, Constantine, he did a lot of stuff to the, to the word. They changed it a lot, mostly yeah. pro male. Oh yeah. Pro male. Absolutely. And <clears throat> As Creator has said to me, that that is not how humans are constructed. They are constructed to love and and have sex, whether it be whether it be heterosexual, homosexual, or whatever. Um, that's what they are. That's why there's been such a, a huge. Um, I think there was. A, a, if you probably saw the other day the. Los Angeles Diocese agreed to a settlement of $880 million um, for all the transgressions that have happened against parishioners over the years. Yes. So they're having to pay for it now. And, you know, it's really a shame. They, they could have had it where, where the priests could have married and, you know, more like um, uh, in England, the Church of England, they allowed their vicars to marry, uh, you know, have a life. And that's what the Catholics should have done. But, well, they were. Initially, priests could get married. But what happened was they would get married and have families. And so their properties or their incomes went to the to their families. The church didn't want that. The church yeah. wanted all of it. So they made it so you couldn't get married. Just like Fish on Fridays, the Pope in Italy made it that you had to have fish on Fridays so he could start getting bigger tidings 
from the seaports, from the people who were at the seaports. Oh. It's all materially related. All material. Money, money, money. Yeah. All money, as they say, forever. But listen, next time, if you have a minute, if you could, if you talk to the, the Jesus, Jesus, well, I talked to him too, but I had a very profound event happen when I was eight years old. I know I went out of my body because when I came back, I was ice cold. So I was probably dead. And uh, I was raised by atheists. So I visited the other side mm. and he was there. And if you if you could ask him that if that was in fact a visit. OK, thanks. Back back to uh, back to Jesus for a second for, um, you know, I had always had the curiosity Um you know, there's that time period that was completely blank from his youth uh, to to when he uh, started uh, uh, teaching and preaching uh, in in Galilee or area. And so that was some of the things that I asked. I said, you know, how did you how did you get to Egypt? Because he went to Egypt to study there, and he said that he had. Uh, made some money by working for his father. And so it was both by land and boat that he got to Egypt. And they knew he was coming because of, of their, and their meditations, they were told he was coming. And so while he was there, he did chores around the village to pay for his, his uh, upkeep. And he studied all, you know, many of the old parchments and everything that were in Egypt. And then after that, by sea and land, he went to India. And again, in India, they knew he was coming um, through their meditations. And he had the very best teachers in India. And so I, I found that interesting just to kind of close that portion of- uh, I think Eckhart Tolle, not Eckhart Tolle, uh... Pardon? Uh, Edgar Casey talks about his life, what he did before that, that mm -hmm. he had been in in, in those areas. But yeah. you know, it's really strange. I told you that I couldn't go under. I did have a lady in San Francisco. She was expensive. I tried her. This was back in the 80s. And she told me, which was very weird, that I had been in Egypt and my father wasn't royalty, but we lived pretty well. And that I met Jesus. I was a young girl, maybe 12, 13. Mm. And I was totally enthralled with him. Just totally enthralled with him. Yeah. But that life, I had met him. So I was alive during his lifetime. Oh, well. And and I was Salome, the uh, mother of James and John, and was one of Jesus' uh, disciples, um, female disciples. And he said, I, I asked how many female? And he said, almost as many as the male ones. And I also asked, uh, someone asked me about, um, were the disciples able to heal? And he said, yes, he raised their vibrational levels high enough that they could do simple healings, um, but they couldn't pass that along to their followers. So therefore, uh, those people could not heal. It was only, it was only uh, uh, the disciples of Jesus. Wow, that's wonderful. But he he raised their vibrational levels. So, Do you remember Ruth Montgomery? Yes, I I knew Ruth uh, and actually uh, hired her for a um, uh, for a psychic seminar many years ago uh, in both Dallas and Houston and really sweet lady. I think she was the real thing too. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And so, she, her name was, wasn't she, she came from Jesus's life. Her name was Ruth. Arthur, the one that talked to her from the other side mm. told her her name was Ruth at that time. And there was a Ruth in Jesus's life. But she she was a really I loved her books I just sucked them up her and and yeah. uh, uh, there is a river 
And uh, there was a lot. It wasn't as big, but I remember feeling that goosebump feeling of, oh, my God, this is real. Yep. Yeah, she, uh, it, it was one of those funny things. I mean, it was the only, it was the only psychic seminar I ever ran. And I, I know that there was a, a point for doing that, you know, that I had Ruth Montgomery, I had Dr. Edith Fiore and, uh, and, and Brad and, and his wife at that time, Francie Steiger. And I had it set up because, uh, of course, my wife and I used to own an international tour company. And uh, we had a setup where where half of them would do half a day, and then they then they flew by Southwest Airlines down to Houston, and uh, while the other people were doing the other half a day into the evening, and then and then we flew down and we'd do the whole thing all over again. So it was pretty successful. We had like three hundred and fifty people at each one, and this was pre. <laughs> pretty early in the game yeah and it got sold out uh pretty well because they're just you know we we hired a these rooms and they were uh, you know i had to have room because everybody laid on the floor and they put them into a an altered state to see if, what they could do uh you know and receive them. So cool. they were spread out all over that that auditorium Shirley McLean did that with her little event. But yeah. what did uh, what did Ruth deal with meditation or psychic stuff, or did she just talk about the books? I think she just talked about the books. Yeah. As near as I remember. Um, Brad Steiger was the one that put people under. And um, uh, Dr. Edith Fiore um, uh, brought a lady out of the audience and and did a uh, had her go into a past life to explain what you know what she was doing in this life. It was pretty interesting too. Really. Oh, I bet it was. Oh, heck yeah! I would have signed up for that. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> so, any other experiences you've been going through lately? Is your life advancing beautifully? Have you been oh, feeling okay? You know, I keep hanging around. They they keep saying really soon. You know, for for visiting Antura and I'm saying speed it up guys you know I'm not getting any younger <laughs> and, um so you know and they in the meantime they were saying well you know start watching YouTubes on on doing documentaries and everything to help you uh no more my, my daughter has a degree in film so it'll be nothing no problem with her but you guys are ready to go now, did you explain about this whole thing? Because you've been talking about this trip with Antoria. No, I'm I, I'm leaving them out of it. And and the the reason is I I got the message that they should everyone should be living their lives presently. You know, presently, right, and making decisions presently without saying, oh, but you know, we might we might be doing this. You know, so you know. When when it's time, it's time, and and you know I've been told it's close to time for you know timeline seven, Tom, and uh, you know I don't know if we need to get into timelines today, but but everybody has twelve parallel lives, and we're on timeline six, and timeline seven, Tom and family, they they have already visited, and all the other timelines above them. Have all visited uh, Antura ship, um, and Time on Seven was in 2022, and so I was expecting it to be 2023, and uh, and I've been expecting it ever since. So it's it's taken a lot longer, and they said it's because 50% of the people on Earth need to believe that there are actually um, uh, hope that didn't show up on your screen. Uh, they, no. uh, fifty percent of the people on Earth need to believe that they're actually ETs, and that's been difficult because there are so many religions that teach that 
we're the only beings in the whole universe. Yeah, that's not true. Out of, <laughs> out of trillions of galaxies, we're the only one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So it's a shame. But uh, again, that's it's definitely got more though. It definitely since I was a kid till now. Because I I got to be honest with you. Until I went to Sedona with Tana, my first Sedona event, we hooked up with a woman that does you know has the military grade goggles, and we I I wasn't a hundred percent at all. And mm -hmm. then when I saw two two light forces or. Uh, UFOs go straight up like this and then go different directions at the speed of light. And then sometimes they would glow. You'd use that thing that you point at them yep. and then they would burst into a big glow and then they'd come back down. I was uh -huh. like, we saw like 53 that night and I was just wide eyed. Yep. I was also scared. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sort of comes along with it, but but I'm hoping uh, on Antares ship, there are 39 different types of beings from 37 different planets. And they're all getting along well together. And, and I've been communicating also with a Pleiadian who this Pleiadian is in charge of a team that meets uh, once a month with these scientists in six different countries. And all six of these countries think they're the only ones that the Pleiadians are meeting with and getting them information on back engineering or whatever. And in actuality, you know, they're they're meeting with six different countries and they're they're giving them all the same information so everyone doesn't get ahead of each other. So you've got the Pleiadian, um, they have well the Syrian crew is 900 plus their families totaling up about 1500 and the Pleiadian Pleiadian says that their crew is about 800 and uh, about double that as far as families so and and there's about 30 different types of beings on the Pleiadian ship so We've got all these beings that we're going to learn about. It's going to be so fantastic. Yes. I've been I've been asking questions about uh, about um, Antares uh, teammates, and I I have a terrible time with names. Me and too. So Antara, his team is composed of of what he calls exotic girl, and big guy who's about seven feet and average guy who is average in height. And so I've been asking all sorts of questions about them. Uh, did just a Saturday. And you, if you go back to the last newsletter in the year, newsletter before, you'll find all sorts of questions that, that I've asked about what they look like because they, they, I can't say, well, what do you look like? And they give me a detailed description. When I first started talking to Antur, I had to a ask absolutely each individual question uh, about what he looked like. Eyes, ears, you know, gills, because oh, okay. he's a water being, and on and on and on. So um, they, they say they are restricted. I have to ask the questions. They can't, I can't ask a general question. They, I have to ask specific questions wow okay but speaking of questions if you guys get into the newsletter you have an address there where you can uh, request or to ask a question right <laughs> in your yeah. newsletter we well can ask questions yes okay uh, of course you go to the newsletter which, or go to the website which is www.thegentleway book.com and when you click on articles and news every newsletter has my my email address in there and uh, uh, but before you ask the question there's a, a search box on that page where all those newsletters are do a search for for the topic of your question and see what I've 
received before. Yeah, they might have already asked. 30, 000, over 30,000 questions, maybe I've asked something similar. And if I haven't, I'll be happy to. Yeah, my uh, I get a lot of the same questions, but a lot of times I answer it again, only because we're in a time of such turbulence that sometimes mm -hmm. people just need to feel okay. They just need to know, is are you getting the same vibration? But energetically for the world, are the ETs saying that we're okay? Of course, you know, I don't believe in doom and gloom or prophesizing it, but are we going to get through all this upsets? Yeah, supposedly by the end of the century, there will be virtually no wars. Yay! And that's such a great... That's a great feeling. For, yeah. And, you know, people will say gloom and doom, third world war, blah, blah, blah. Um, I've never seen a third world. There's the Earth, rumors yeah. of war. Yeah, the Earth experiment is going to on for only, and I say only, 7,000 more years because it's been going on for several million. And um, uh, so it's going to end in 7,000 years. And by the end of that 7,000 years, everyone will have had their 600 to 800 lives on average on Earth, and they will all be back on their home planets, um, helping the people on their home planets to raise their vibrational levels, which was, which was why the creator created the Earth experiment because all these trillions of beings were stuck at about 5.3, 5.4, and they weren't, their vibrational levels weren't increasing. And by us living in a whole solar system that has nothing but four negative energies, we're going to spread that across the universe, and eventually it will spread across all the trillions of other universes. So, we are the stars, which is why of those 25 or so um, uh, motherships, there's typically a couple that are from other universes, which is why you see such weird things in the sky sometimes, oh, I think. Weird That's shaped stuff. Weird. <laughs> weird. So if you have to you have to follow UFO sightings on my Facebook, uh, which people, if you want to follow me on Facebook, it's it's uh, Tom T. Moore author, okay? And you can follow me on Facebook. I, I post these these uh, UFO sightings and, and also interesting talks and everything all the time. And uh, then I'll post them in the newsletter, but it's, you know, there's there may be eight or 10 and it takes a lot of time to get through them if you're, you know, if you're uh, uh, just going to try and do it after after you receive the newsletter. So All right. I think I'm subscribed to you. Hmm? Do you have more than one Facebook account? Uh yes. But okay, I must one, have the one I'm filled up on. The personal Tom T. Moore account is yeah. is filled and and but uh Tom T. Moore author, um uh, anybody can can sign up for. Okay, I see it right here. Okay, got it. All right, my friend, can you believe what's about an hour we've been on? Well, yeah, close. <laughs> Do you have any other announcements <laughs> you want to make? Yeah, have we have we covered everything? Um, uh, it's uh, you know, there's just a a lot going on, and and oh, I will mention. You know, we mentioned, uh, you know, saying a benevolent, asking for an MBO or yeah. a most benevolent outcome. Uh, when you do it for other people, beings, whatever, you say, I ask any and all beings to blank, blank, blank. Could be aid and assist the people in Florida to recover from, uh, quickly recover from the hurricane uh thank you so you can you can change it uh if you if you see a poor dog uh you know that needs to be taken care of you i, I ask any all beings to aid and assist that dog to find help 
And uh, thank you. you. You can, and in my newsletter, I have a, a benevolent prayer for both the Ukraine and for uh, Palestine. Um, and, and there's also a, a, there's a prayer I've told, it's sort of like the forgiveness prayer. And yeah. I say it every single morning because you have to understand all of these lives that you're having on earth are all going on at exactly the same time. So you need to say this, this sort of forgiveness prayer every single morning because maybe that's the day that you do something bad to somebody and you need you need to ask for good forgiveness. So you say, I ask, let's see, <laughs> if I can, I ask any and all beings to come to the aid and comfort of anyone that I've ever harmed, either physically, mentally, morally, spiritually, or emotionally in any past, present, or future life. And I ask that any and all beings come to the aid and comfort of the families and friends of anyone that I've ever harmed in any way, in any past. Yeah, when you ask for forgiveness on earth, it's easier when you transfer it to the other side. It doesn't yeah. go and, long. and Theo, my guardian angel, says, Tom, trust me on this. He said, you need to say this every single day. It, it will greatly help all your other lives. He said, this is your first life out of a thousand and five, because uh, I seem to come back lots. Um, this is your first, first life out of a thousand five that that you've come up with this prayer. So please say it every day. So I do. There you go. I believe in it too. So on your page, I was just looking happy 50th wedding anniversary, by the way. Oh, <laughs> well, that was that was a while back. I've been trying to, to figure out. I, I'm not very good at, the, at these pages. And um, uh, 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 yeah, that that took a, a, a little while back, but um, uh, we're both it, very it good. It keeps showing up because I don't I don't put new photos in there. You know, yeah, I got I got to take care of that someday. Someday, maybe when you're on the ship. Yeah, <laughs> there. No, uh, well, so we we'll won't stay strangers so long. We'll get together probably in November if you don't mind. Sure. Well, and we'll and see what after the dust settles. After the dust settles, that'll be interesting. I I yeah. know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen, and I feel really good about it. So, you guys, I'm going to put the links in the box when I post this video. And thank you, Tom, for coming around again and saying hi. And um, um, I got good feelings. I really like that prayer, though about forgiveness that really does help yep and i really yep. love the jesus stuff do you yeah. put that in every newsletter or just this one particular one well those that was a a combination of several newsletters i might okay. ask three or four or five questions in one another three or four five you want questions. me to send my question that i had just asked you if he mm -hmm. if he if he saw me if that experience I had was real or not yes uh, send me send me an email I'll send you the that. question okay Let's... well happy Sunday and go 49ers <laughs> that's true playing, playing KC KC is a good team <laughs> they so, are it'll be a good game it'll be a good they haven't lost yet so yep all right my friend most benevolent outcome to the 49ers love but, and you know, everyone Everyone in this that's watched this program, love and light to each of you. Yes, thank you. And also, you know, they, they've often told me when I go, please, please, please. They said, you know, the realm can't take sides. It's like, no, we're not going to guarantee your 49ers win. It's, it's no, what, what it's is the, supposed to happen. I found it gets into soul contracts yeah. that, that no matter what I say, oh, go light, you know, to my team or whatever. It looks like it's soul contracts. Yeah. All right, you guys. Love to all. Peace to all. And uh, I'll let you know when I post this. I'll send you a copy. Okay. Bye-bye.